Okay, what I'm going to demonstrate today is a way of doing vector addition. Given a problem where initially we have an aircraft that is flying 60 degrees south of due east. So that's 60 degrees south of due east. And there's also a wind that's pushing on the aircraft, and it's pushing the aircraft at 60 degrees north of due east. So that would be something like this. And the speed of the aircraft is 180, so I'm going to put 180 meters per second here. And the speed of the wind is 60 meters per second. So this is 60. All right, and so there's six steps that I consider essential for adding vectors. So the first one we just did, draw the vectors. So here we drew the two vectors, one for the aircraft and one for the wind pushing on the aircraft the entire time that the aircraft is moving down and to the right, but mostly down. So then the next thing to do is to add these vectors, add them graphically. So if you have graph paper that helps, or at least make a good approximation on a clean piece of white paper. So instead of using the same color, I'm going to replace the wind with an orange vector. Try to make it about one third the length of the uh, aircraft speed vector. And so now when I want to add them graphically, I take the tail and start with the tail at the origin and I can do either the wind or the aircraft. The aircraft is bigger, so I'll just start with the aircraft vector. And then I'm going to add the wind to that, so I must take the tail and add it to the uh, tip of the vector for the aircraft. And so then I go ahead and draw this up in this direction. And I look and see they look to be about the same length and about the same angle. And so that's going to be the final total direction and magnitude of the flight of the aircraft. So I'll finish that off in green. And so that's going to be moving off. And this is what the aircraft's true speed and direction will be when we take into account the wind. And so that's the, uh, the part where we add them graphically. Now the next step, step three, is find the x and y components of each vector. So I'm going to try to do that over here, not make it so messy. And so this is 60. meters per second and uh, conveniently I picked a 60 degree angle as well so this is also 60 and so I need to get the x and the y components of this vector so this vector here is opposite of a 30 degree angle so the opposite of a 30 degree angle is half the hypotenuse so that means that this is going to be 30 meters per second for the wind and then the uh, vector going up is going to be given by 60 cosine of, uh, I'm sorry, sine of the angle. So sine of 60, 60 cos, 60 sine 60. And when you punch that out, I think uh, that's something like 51.96. So 51.96, and that's the wind vector broken up into its x and simultaneous y components. And they're both going to be positive. Now if we want to look at what's happening to the aircraft, we can go ahead and draw that vector. And so that's 180. And that's also a 60 degree angle right here. And then we want to drop the x to be straight down from the x-axis, the x and y components. So here's our 90 degree angle again. So again, we're breaking this 180. Let me write that a little bit more clearly, 180. And 
and so it's got some speed both in the x and in the y direction simultaneously, this time uh, also in the positive x, but then also in the negative y direction as opposed to the wind, which is going to be in the positive y direction. So I'm now finding the x and y components of the second vector, and so again the side opposite of a 30 degree angle is half the hypotenuse, so the y component right here is going to be 90 meters per second. And then the uh, y component is going to be given by 180 times sine, again, of 60, since it also makes a 60 degree angle. And uh, we find out that when we punch that into the calculator, uh, that ends up giving us 155.9. meters per second, and it will be in the negative y direction. We've completed the first three steps, now the next step is add the x and the y components together so that we can recreate this green triangle, and so what that's going to consist of is we're going to look at the x component, and so here's the x component of the aircraft, and then we're going to add the x component of the wind that would be something like this. And then we're going to add the y components together. And the wind is going to have one that's a vector that's going to be pointing up. And we're going to have the aircraft vector pointing down. And so when we add these two vectors together, the resultant will be this green final vector, which is going to be the x's added together. Well, that's what this is representing, and the y's added together, which is what this final vector will represent. And then the net result is our total direction and magnitude. So <clears throat> when we want to add the x components, we just take the 30 plus the 90, so we know that this is going to be 120, so 120 meters per second in the X hat direction is a common way of writing that, or in the I hat direction. And <clears throat> then when we add the Y components, we have negative 155 and we have positive 51.96. So that total is 103.9. So this vector right here is 103.9 meters per second. And it will be in the negative Y hat or J hat direction. <clears throat> so that's the two components in the X and the Y total. And so that's the uh, one, that's one way you can actually describe this vector is in terms of its X and Y components. But if the question is what is the total magnitude and direction, then you have to move on to step five. And step five says calculate the total vector's magnitude and direction. And so the total magnitude will just be 120 squared plus 103 squared of 104, because this again is a 90 degree angle, so we have right triangles, and so the magnitude then, uh, our magnitude of our final resultant vector is just going to be square root of 120 squared plus 103.9 squared and when we punch that uh, all out, the total magnitude then ends up being 158.7. So 158.7 meters per second. And so that's the overall magnitude. So you can see it's less than the aircraft speed. So it actually slowed the aircraft down relative to the ground anyway, because the wind was kind of pushing against the aircraft. And then to get the direction, we take the uh, tangent <coughs> argument and say the tangent of the angle that we're looking at for this little green angle here, negative from the or in the negative direction from the x positive x axis, tangent of 103.9. Tan oops, sorry, tangent of theta equals 103.9. 0.9 divided by 120 
and the units will cancel out. And so when you look to solve for this problem, you'll find out that theta then is just gonna be equal to a negative angle, first of all. And then when you punch it out on your calculator, the angle ends up being 40.6 degrees. And so we uh, then finally do the most important part is to compare this with what you came up with in your graphical uh, description. And I see that my green arrow here looks to be a little bit less, so that kind of matches the fact that it's 158 instead of 180 for the blue vector. And it's going to be uh, uh, sh kind of short, but uh, because of the angle, we know that this has to be smaller than this. And so 103 versus 120, and so an angle of about minus 40 degrees looks about right. So I think I did a pretty good job on analyzing this problem. And so five, uh, six steps, four if you're only going to do it in the component uh, solutions of 103 and 120, but if you want to get magnitude and the angle, then you have to do steps five and six.